Motion. So, call the Cascade Charter Township Planning Commission meeting uh, to order for Monday, March 6, 2023. <clears throat> Record that all are present uh, from attendance. If uh, moving on to Article 2, Pledge of Allegiance, everybody would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. I mean, that's fine. That's why I did it. <laughs> hey, before we move on to Article Three, I think we have a new father that has uh, joined us this evening. Congratulations and welcome back. Thank you. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah. Everything I assume is going well. Not sleeping a lot, but besides that, yeah. no, that's good for you. Good for the sleep. Get yeah. used to it. Yeah. Get used to it. Yeah. You get used to it. You can pause. No. Right. <laughs> saying. Just saying. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I make a motion to approve the current agenda. <laughs> moved by Member Rissy and supported by uh, Member Engel. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, we'll move on. Uh, would anybody like to disclose a conflict of interest? As a matter of fact, I would. Okay. I don't think I've ever been able to, so I was really excited about this. But Let's hear it. Article 8. Uh, I believe that I have, uh, well, I, I know I have done my business is uh, doing work at the applicant's home. So nothing related to the project, but there is kind of a relationship with the applicant. So I just wanted to... Uh, throw that out there. I have had no conversations regarding this project or property with that person. And I haven't talked to them in months, maybe even years. So I just wanted to th throw it out there. I don't think it's a conflict, but I did want to disclose it. Does anybody have a concern with member Rissy's conflict or appearance of a conflict? No, I do not. Okay. Hearing none, you'll stay on. Thank you. Does anybody else that wishes to disclose a conflict? <clears throat> I'm a member of Watermark. I don't know if that's a conflict. Does anybody see member Rollins? No, that. There is a conflict. I don't even have to be a member and you guys would point at me. <laughs> Eating at their restaurant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, we're going to move forward. <laughs> um, we need to approve the minutes of the February 6th meeting. Anybody like to take a stab at that? So move. Okay, move by Member Rissy. Support. Supported by Member Ringo. I did find an error. You did? Oh, yes. Oh, that's here. I'm glad you brought it up. Graphical. Article seven, uh, third to the last line. You weren't the secretary then, right? Depends on what he finds. All right. <laughs> it's 200, which should be 20. TOO, which should be TO. Rezone two industrial. I see that. You're right. No, I was never real good at English. Thank you, Member Bernard. Uh, while we're fixing that sentence. Oh, hang on. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. We could probably delete the of them part. So we'll just say, and none that attended. The secretary concur. What, what, um, Article 7. Right. The first paragraph of Article 7, so each one out. Right here. And none of them. That attended the meeting. You want to strike the none of them? So it's just... Uh, I guess I would strike the of them. Of them? So I would read, and none that attended the meeting, instead of and none of them that attended the meeting. It's just like a, That's a fair very question. wordy sentence, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I'll go along with those. All right. So the motion is made with the amendments brought by Member Bernal, Member Richardson, uh, and supported by Member Ingo. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, we'll move forward. Uh, Article 6, acknowledge visitors who are wishing to speak. Uh, we will have a public hearing for the 1550 Thorn Apple River Drive. So if you're here for that, you can wait. Uh, but if you're here uh, for Watermark or anything else, 
Uh, now would be one of two opportunities uh, if you wish to speak. Nobody out there? Okay. All right. Uh, we will move on to Article 7. Case online. Ah, she shook her head now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Moving on to Article 7, case number 23-3753, J. Visser Designs. Well, Madison. Hello. I don't know how much you want to see me. We can set up a site for you. Oh. Okay. Hello, everyone. We have an application from J. Visser Designs for 1550 Thorn Apple River Drive. And they are looking to expand their accessory building um, by adding on 825 square feet, um, which would require a type one special use permit from the Planning Commission because it exceeds the allowable 832 square feet by right. Uh, the property has an existing boathouse of 670 square feet. Uh, we just wanted to make a note that it was determined with the applicant that it is a detached accessory building um, and a total square footage of the new building would be 1495. Um, we Looked into the property, did a site visit and noticed there was a shed on the property that we would uh, require to be removed. The applicant is aware and is okay with that. Um, we evaluated the site plan to meet our zoning standards and all of the setbacks are meeting the requirements. And then the proximity of the boathouse to the water is allowed per item G on this in chapter four of our zoning ordinance. They don't have to have a setback from the water's edge. Um, in reviewing the factors for you guys to consider, the um, building as a whole is a pretty standard type of building around the river, a boathouse um, made to be designed in the look of the rest of the home. Um, the homes along the river are similar in size and they may not have as large a boathouses, but again, it's not uncommon in the area. And we did receive a total of three letters of support from across the river directly next door and then another resident who submitted in support. Um, my recommendation based on the factors above not having too many adverse effects or any adverse effects um, I would recommend approving this with um, conditions that the proper permits are obtained uh, for building close to the water, um, that the accessory building isn't used as a living or dwelling space, and that that existing shed that's on the property would be removed um, by the time the project is completed. I did also bring the plans that have the existing well and drain field because that did come up as an issue before so i brought it as your request if look that, at you scott she, so it was. would be <laughs> out of the way <clears throat> and not interfering thank uh, you for that yes you're welcome. any questions for staff uh not a business out of there either right you didn't say that but i'm i'm, I'm scrolling through because i thought i remember it. i mean that should be I a requirement that. too that there's you just didn't say it i just want to make sure that that's the accessory yeah. building is not used as a living space or dwelling or to run a business correct? okay yep all right just want to make sure yep. yes any other questions for staff i may have missed this but um any lighting concerns there wasn't any proposed lighting, but we could add a condition that any um, exterior lighting would have to uh, adhere to our zoning standards. We usually do and that building standards. Yeah. I think Member Bernal has a question. I had a couple. Um, when you're looking at square footage, it's a two-story accessory building, which is, I think, in my opinion, kind of unusual. So when we're saying that it's 680 square feet existing. No, two-story is existing, as I understand it. Right. So it's 1360, really, of finished space is that correct no, the, no, no it's no. my understanding that the two story is the existing building and then they're adding an additional 601 story right 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 so it's not uh, a 25 yeah so i'll show you the picture that i 
to this tell building you, is existing. This is what they're adding. Right. But this building here that is 680 is 680 level one, 680 level two. So I think he's, he's looking at the total of the accessory building. Saying, uh, can you, is, how is that measured? I mean, it's, just, how is that measured though? I mean, like, I had Brian pull up the, the township documentation and it says, um, uh, what was the exact term? Yeah, when measuring accessory building size, we've typically floor, use the footprint. Footage. Yeah, use the footprint of the building to measure that. Then we have setback restrictions based on the height of the building. Okay, so then you wouldn't measure the second floor. Not for terms of deciding whether it's special use is needed or not. Is it standard? I'm sorry, you don't use your more questions. Well, just, and member alone, member Rissy has a question. You know, what, I'll ask my question to the applicant later. Okay. Yes. I was just surprised when you add it all up, it's going to be about 3,000 square foot of space, which is an extremely large accessory. Yeah, just when we consider these permits, we use the footprint as a standard. So that's what I've considered here. And then the final one was the size of the lot versus the amount of, I would call it like built out space. By my thumbnail calculations, it's like 25% of the land would be an impervious material is that kind of right is that how does that compare to most residential lots because i mean just they have a an accessory drive a two stall drive a turnaround a roundabout lots of cement slabs lots of decking and we're adding more is that in line as a newbie on the council this is stuff i'm looking at yeah so when i looked at that they have a little over an acre and the building that they're going to be adding is behind anything seen from the road or um, it's not added onto the front necessarily and it's added on into the slope at the back. So it didn't seem to be too obtrusive into the existing open space on the property. Um, so that's the consideration that I took in the factors I think, there. I think your point was about impervious. Sir. Correct. Like it, it, it was, it's oh, okay. runoff at 25% coverage. It, it seems larger than I would have guessed is typical. And I was just wondering if I had any data on that. I do not have any specific data on that, no. It'd be worthy, however, Renal, to consider that it is a, a riverfront property. And uh, having lived on that that river, I would say by and large, a lot of the um the the lots have larger dwellings compared to uh, so if you were to look at that data, I would, I would look at it through that filter. Okay. Right. Uh, other people of course i do have a question but... did member roland have a question uh no i can i can do it when we have our comment okay kind of thing. it's more of a statement yeah yeah i just have a question about g Thank you. um chapter four of the zoning ordinance i just want clarification so the zoning ordinance does allow for boat houses is that correct yes and they are considered your outbuilding they're considered an accessory building yes but the setback gets an exception right. for the water i yeah. just wanted to clarify yes I, Thought I had heard somewhere that we didn't that was old the old ones were being grandfathered in so I just wanted clarification that we do allow both we do and we've as approved an them accessory in the past. building recent Correct. Oh, not too mm -hmm. recent but recent really. Scott's time yeah that's all I that's all I needed okay thank you yeah <clears throat> any other questions of staff is the applicant present and if you are would you be willing to come up and answer questions we have some if you could, uh, when you come up, please uh, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Hi, Tom Aubard, fifteen fifty Thorn Apple River Drive. Thanks for coming in, Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants to go first? No, I, I don't have any. Uh, it would be more of a con well, yeah. When we get to the yeah. Right, Member Bernard, do you have questions for the applicant? Um, no, not that he'd probably better answers than our own okay. staff. All right. Member Rissick. What kind of boat are you planning to put this beautiful <laughs> boathouse that you've uh that you know, we have a pontoon? Okay. Yep. All right. Good. Any other questions of the applicant? Anything, any statements you want to make on behalf of the project? No, I mean, I think it's a beautiful addition to the house, and it actually would take away the somewhat eyesore of our current boat lift. Sure. Which actually blocks our neighbors views so what's the intent for the the space to put our pontoon in just the pontoon. okay yep 
And you have enough length for that? For the pontoon? Yeah. Oh, actually, it's a, it's a well-used body of water. I mean, there's lots of people that are out there. No, I mean the boathouse. I'm familiar with the water. I'm oh, oh yeah, yeah. Enough yes. length in the boathouse yes. to accommodate what you need to do. Yep. Okay. Um, Jeff is our architect has made sure that everything is, I mean, what you're seeing here is going to accommodate our needs. Good. I mm -hmm. think the reason he's asking is page 12. There's a note that says verify there's enough length for the boat to fit in here. Yes. That would be one very important factor. <laughs> yeah. like it's still on the print. It'd not... be a bummer if we put it in and it's well, still sticking out the end. Quotes <laughs> is that over time you have a tendency to get another one, and sometimes bigger it's one. bigger. Yeah, <laughs> no, so, this one isn't going to be getting bigger. That's for sure. I would like to make a general comment, and that is that thank your neighbors for emailing in. That's important to us mm -hmm. because. We're flying in the in the dark a lot of times, and so when your neighbors email in, that that's a big help to us. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Well, actually, that was spontaneous. I guess a letter is sent out to them. Okay. Good. Um, so we are grateful. It's the most positive correspondence that I have seen at an accessory. Program. Yeah. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. It goes a long way. Yeah. Uh, Member Moxley. Uh, just a general comment as an architect, I think this is a handsome addition to your facility. And I'm at, at that corner quite often because I live in Tamaran okay. out there at uh, Bridgewater. Fantastic. And, uh, it's, it's a beautiful place to start with. Thanks. And I'll just add my two cents here. As a, as a former resident on Denison Drive at the end of Tom McDonald's old house, mm -hmm. uh, having been in the old farmhouse that preceded yours, You've done a really nice job with a somewhat limited space on that corner, and Tom Brooks did a wonderful job on your landscaping. Uh, phenomenal, yeah. uh, both in terms of privacy and his selections there. So kudos to the whole team. Well, we, we have been blessed with some pretty amazing people <laughs> on our side. Makes a difference. Yeah. Any other comments or questions for the applicant? Tom, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Make a motion to go to public hearing. Motion made by Member Rissi and supported by support, supported by Member Engel. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Hearing none opposed, we'll go to public hearing. Would anybody like from the public to say anything about this matter? Anybody on the Zoom? I would make a motion to close the public hearing. Motion made by Member Rissi and supported by, by Member Corsonage. All those in favor say aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, we'll move out of public hearing into uh, planning commission comments does anybody have any comments oh i do <laughs> as a collector of boats i would say that uh <clears throat> appreciate what they're trying to do here and it looks looks like a pretty good plan to me um uh, and uh unless anybody else has any comments to make i'd make a motion in favor of it with the uh with a recommendation including that uh, proper permits are to be obtained for work being done at the water's edge and the accessory building is not to be used as a living space or to run a business and uh, any outdoor lighting needs to meet our regulations and the existing shed on the property must be removed. Yeah, I, I would like to, I'm sorry, we, you guys just went right to it. So we can have uh, discussion. <laughs> no, I just, the shed, I, I mean, I want... Uh, I'd like that shed down before it's completed, if not sooner, right? I mean, because I don't... Is that reasonable? I, I only say that because what if they have materials in the shed that they'd like to move to this when it's completed? In the past, we've typically allowed them to keep the other uh, building up until within a reasonable period of time when the new one is finished. Okay, so. then let's put a reason... What's the reasonable period of time? Uh, well, what do you want to do, like... Uh... 30 Three months or 90 days after the last inspe uh, inspection is approved? Yeah, it could be less than that because it's just a shed. It's not like it's a huge sure. farm moving things over. 30 days? I only mention it to be consistent. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just, I just, um, you know, it, it, the, the next uh, article that we're going to talk about <laughs> is, I mean, it's, it's, so I just want to make sure that something's in there that says, listen, you guys got to prop this thing no, the next amount. Of I think that's smart. Yeah, I think that's smart. So I would amend the motion to also include the condition that the shed must be removed within 30 days of the um, final approved building permit or building uh, inspection. 
We'll support that still, Mr. Okay. Maxley? Okay. Uh, sorry. So motion made uh, by Member Rissi uh, and supported uh, by Member Moxley. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Be opposed. Hearing okay. none. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Moving forward to case number 23-3755, Watermark Property LLC. You should say, excuse me, Chair. Yes. There was one no vote. Oh, I, I voted no, sorry. I did not hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let the record reflect that we had one no vote. They'll hear you when they do the minutes. So, okay. But double check that just to be sure. Okay. All right. All right. So here are the applicants requesting site plan approval for an addition to the east side of the existing clubhouse building at Watermark Country Club. Uh, the site's in the Watermark PUD and the clubhouse is located at the end of Galbraith Avenue. The PUD was created in 1997 and has been amended several times since then. This is a fairly straightforward site plan request, um, apart from a restriction in the PUD ordinance that limits the size of the building to 30,000 square feet. Uh, the ordinance does not explicitly define what areas of the building are meant to be included in that calculation. Typically, for a commercial building, we'd include um, all of the floor area within the building, as that method is kind of easily repeatable from building to building and um, easy to um, apply to any other site plan. Uh, however, in 2013, an addition was approved to the west side of the building, and as part of that site plan review, uh, the mechanical and, mechanical and start cart storage areas in the lower level were not counted towards the building size. So the reasoning being that these areas were not usable space that would generate additional parking or traffic to the site, um, which were the primary concerns for the use there. Uh, I informed the applicant that since that method was previously used, they could use those calculations again for their application, although the Planning Commission will obviously have the final determination um, for your review tonight. So using kind of that previous calculation, the building had approximately 25,400 square feet of what I'll call usable space after the previous addition which would allow for 4,600 square feet to be added and still remain under that 30,000 square foot. Now, the site plan shows that this new addition would add 4,057 square feet of usable space, keeping the building below that 30,000 square feet. So whenever an addition is added to a commercial building, we review the parking on site to see if it can accommodate that added space. For this site, there would be 346 spaces required to accommodate all of the uses. There are 297 existing spaces on site with 49 deferred spaces available to be built, um, as well as an agreement with an adjacent property to use 50 of those their spaces. So as long as that parking agreement is still in place and there are enough parking spaces available and the deferred spaces don't have to be constructed yet at this time. The fire department and the township engineer have both reviewed the application and approved the plans um, and a stormwater maintenance agreement will need to be recorded. One additional item that does need to be addressed is a condition of approval from 2013 that I found uh, while reviewing that case which is that the small one acre parcel immediately to the west of the clubhouse was to be combined with a larger golf course parcel. And it appeared that was required because of setback issues with the addition that was constructed then. Um, so for whatever reason, it appears that the combination was not completed. So I am requiring that those lots be combined before a building permit is issued for this uh, new project. So at this time, staff are recommending site plan approval for the proposed addition with the four conditions listed in the staff report that the applicant complies with the township engineer letter, uh, that a stormwater maintenance agreement is recorded, confirmation that the parking agreement is still in place and active, and then combining the lots at 1616 and 1600 Galbraith Avenue. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, with Overall. regard to the parking agreement, when you're saying verify, is that something that, that would be in writing that they would then submit for our files? How are yep. you? Okay. Yeah, just getting written confirmation from that. So it should be a recorded agreement. So just wanting confirmation from them that it's still. That's good. I just want to make sure it's in writing and we have a copy of it. Sure. Okay, great. And how long does the link that agreement need to be okay. to satisfy the conditions? I believe it's indefinite. Or the idea if, it's, if it is, you know, go away, then they do have to construct those deferred spaces. Okay. Actually. Cool. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Any other questions? Um, what did that mean? Sorry, member Richardson. Um, what did that mean about 50 spaces on adjacent property? So there's the office um, complex next to it. So there's an agreement that the golf course can use 50 spaces. So, I mean, we add those to their existing parking as it's an allowed sharing of parking spaces there. Is the off, sorry, is the office then have 50 access spaces? I believe so. Required? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, they usually have enough spaces to accommodate that shared use. 
And we'll monitor that too, if we get complaints or see people parking on grass or where they're not supposed to, or if an issue comes up. But um, at this point, I've not been aware of any parking issues there. Well, people park on the grass all the time. Well, yeah. <laughs> so Member Rissy has a question. I, I did, and I think I may have answered my own question on the internet here. It's a very useful tool. But so this is a this is not the same facility where they asked for an addition in 2019 with the snap fitness and the pool and stuff. This is the other building. Right, this is the clubhouse where the restaurant is located. Thank you. But it's the same property. It's the same, same property. It's the same PUD. Yeah. Right. Same it's the same PUD, yes. but it's but it's a different parcel altogether. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Member Engel. Do we know why the two pieces of property that were required to be combined as a precondition of our last approval, why that wasn't done? I don't know. I haven't seen anything in why. It was allowed to that addition was allowed to go without that combination. So I'm not sure. Is it the same ownership today that's asking for the approval? I believe so. They may be able to speak that a little bit, and I made them aware of that condition. Okay. okay. Any additional questions for Brian? Yeah. Yes, Brunel. Was this one of the sites identified as a PFAS issue? Not to my knowledge. I mean, it is where the old lax plant. That's what I thought it was the old lax. So yeah, the, the, before you answer that, we might want to double. Well, again, not to my knowledge, but it, yeah. it could be, I guess. Yeah, I haven't heard anything recently. I didn't see anything in the notes from 2013 of issues, I guess. Just my, my concern would be, again, fairly new to this board and fairly new to the community. I thought this was the old lax site. And yeah. I thought this was a PFAS. So my question was, when you start excavating and you've got runoff, is there an issue with that? I don't know if where the clubhouse is per se is where that lax plant was. It's my understanding that it was further over, but we might be able to ask the applicant that. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Any other questions for I, Brian? Oh, yeah, number one. Do you know why um, we didn't follow the standard protocol? What you're saying of usually all the square footage is counted. It sounded like there was a little bit of. I don't know creativity around that, and since we let it happen once, is is it? I think there's the argument. Can you repeating it? I think just in this case, if was something new was coming for me, I wouldn't do that. I told them that you know it makes sense that there that area is not including increasing traffic or um, parking or those things that were concerned for the site. And so that's the only reason I said they can go with those numbers. But again, something new coming in, I I wouldn't use that approach. And just almost more for just simplicity's sake of keeping the same from site to site. So if it were a new applicant. Uh, we would not allow them to remove non-usable space when figuring the total square footage in the PUD. Well, and sometimes it's defined more clear in the PUD, this one that isn't as defined. So it is a little bit of interpretation there, unfortunately, yeah. where again, if we're creating a new PUD, we'd say, you know, right in there specifically, if it's just total square foot or things like that. But since this one's an older PUD and doesn't have that definition written in there, that's kind of why that seemed to occur. Member Bernal? What would be the effort in making that clearer in the PUD so that we don't revisit this again. We'd have to go through the whole PUD amendment process, which, you know, here they want to come here just for the site plan approval, which is one meeting. The PUD requires public hearings and multiple meetings with this group and then the township board as well. Is it common for a site plan to have the space that the, the space for, for 49 parking spaces, but to not create those parking spaces and use an adjacent building's parking. You know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. have the space. I understand they probably don't yeah. want to do it because it costs money, but is that? It's I mean, a little unique, but I mean, we'd prefer to see that way as well. We want as little impervious surface as possible. We okay. don't want people making new parking lots that don't need to be used. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure it's not sure. unusual. Yep. Any other questions for Brian? Thank you. The applicant would step forward, same drill, uh, name and address. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Rob Behrens with Naderville, did the site plan. Uh, I have uh, Craig Smith and uh, Jeremy Edwards from uh, Red, uh, Redwater Group with me, as well as the architect to uh, address some of these uh, questions. Um, I guess uh, this is this building addition is on the east side. Uh, we're talking about square footages, what's included and what's not. The building main floor, 
where you go into the restaurant. That is about a 2,500 square foot addition. The other 1,500 is down below where the, um, I think it's the pro shop is down there. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to enhance the experience of the, uh, of the patrons there for the, for the restaurant dining and, and then for the, uh, uh, the, the uh, golf uh, pro shop there. So um, as far as a parcel combination, uh, I wasn't around in 2013 when that happened. And I talked to the ownership group. They said it just slipped through the cracks. They've already told us to get it going. So our survey team is working on that parcel combination already. Um, Mr. Smith could uh, speak to that more if you had further questions. Um, stormwater maintenance agreement, we've read the, uh, the requirement for that and we're good with that. Uh, Mr. Smith also did uh, talking about the, uh, par the parking uh, agreement. That is a recorded document with the Kent County Register of Deeds. It was recorded in, I don't, I had, uh, do you have that document that you sent us? The date? Me. The date. It's a recorded document with the thing. It's still in effect. We can make another copy of it online to show it to you, but, you know, be it versus an email, if we need to get a letter from the current owner that it's still in effect, that's fine, but, but we can assure you we still use those, and it's a seasonal parking thing, and uh, it seemed to work fairly well. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, stormwater. We, we're not adding any uh, sewer or water public utilities. Stormwater is going to be directed to the same place where it goes now. It actually goes to the north to the existing pond when you first come in behind uh, off from Cascade Road there. So the infrastructure's there. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about the, uh, the building, um, the actual concrete, so when you, we're, uh, we're moving 20 some odd feet, 25, 28 feet to the east, the uh, actual edge of the concrete that's there today, if you're familiar with the cart storage, we tried to maintain that. So we're doing everything from there to the building, kind of adding the building in there, and we have to change the, the ramp to go down into the uh, cart storage area. So there's a little bit of addition uh, right at the top of that ramp so that we can get the carts in and out. But um, I believe we satisfied the engineer. And uh, so, yeah, we're here to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have questions for the applicant? I do. So you're adding to the side of the restaurant above where the carts are stored currently. And what are you going to do with that new space? Is it just going to be added to the restaurant? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Just expanding the restaurant? Expanding. <clears throat> okay. So there will be some additional pro shop area and then a little bit of additional cart storage because we're just pulling a whole area out. Okay. So the pro shop's going to stay downstairs or? It's going to move upstairs. Oh, it's going to move upstairs. Okay. Okay. So the pro shop's going to move upstairs. Bar's going to be bigger, more restaurant space. Okay. Marengo? I, I just was curious, is the parking arrangement uh, an affirmative easement on the adjoining property? Is it a use easement or is it a contractual arrangement where you have, they have agreed to provide this potential use of their parking space for some consideration? What What's the arrangement? I don't know. Do you remember, Craig, if you paid for that parking? You're talking you, about the, uh, the 50 spaces north of the, north. North of the yeah, pool? No, it, it's, it's, actually, it's actually a uh, trade, basically. So because we're both seasonal businesses, our busy time of the year is May through August. And that office park's busy time of the year was for September through uh, April. So it's really a trade where we have their spaces to use those busy months of the year. And they actually can have a few of our spots in the other months. Of the year. So we really played off the seasonality of when we're, because most of the time our lot's not very full. It's still three months of the year where we need their spaces. Is that agreement in writing? Yes. Okay. That's what's been reported. I think it was written in the year 2000 when the property was mm -hmm. built. That's when that was that agreement was put together in 2000. Yeah. 2001, somewhere in there. Township staff actually has the yeah, actual okay. recorded document. Okay. Sure. It's been in place for over 20 years. Does anybody else have any questions for the applicant? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody have any comments before we put this up for a vote? 
Well, <clears throat> ladies first. The only comment I have is just, I think, and it's maybe not directed at them, maybe it's directed at them, just the frustration that there was stipulations previously that were not followed through with. Um, and I know that's is a huge issue within the township and hopefully things have been set in place to correct that to not let that happen in the future but <clears throat> when I first looked at this my initial thought was I think we should table it all together until those things are corrected but hearing that they are already in the process of it I think helps some um but yeah you could you could prohibit them from breaking ground until it's done that's what I was going to recommend it yeah just say it has to be done before the building permit is issued. Well, I think that's what Brian said. The permit yeah, wasn't going to be issued it. until those. He those did. He did and reading or hearing that yeah. from him, yeah. I think, helped that. It's just frustrating because I think for years and years and years, there's been stipulations put in place in Cascade and, and builders and people have just disregarded them and done what they wanted to do. And I think that's all I have to say. Yes, no, no. I would say similarly with, with the PUDs, right? Why do we create all these rules and regulations and then we just kind of squint and let everything fly through? It just seems like there's a credibility issue being new to the new to the board. Like the previous topic was 832 square feet. And if you read it with a legal eye, I think it will take 32 square feet, period. And we just approve something for 3,000, four times it. Where do we start drawing the lines on actually following our documentation that's in front of us? This is the second one in a row where we're going to say when it could be done, I think completely correct. I mean, it's beautiful, just like the previous one, beautiful. I mean, fantastic, but we're violating kind of some of the, the background behind it. They could change the PUD and actually we wouldn't be subverting something that's already there. I wonder okay, sometimes what well, I would answer that really quick. The, the, the accessory building, the 832 square feet was set up and I've talked to the people who put it there mm -hmm. only so that this body saw it. It, it was never intended as a hard rule, like it can't exceed that. Okay. It was only there to say, hey, we don't, every property is going to be unique. So instead of putting rules in place, we'd rather say if it's over 832 square feet. I think it's 824. 824, my apologies. If, it, if it's over 824, we want the planning commission to look at it and make a unique judgment. Okay. So. And and looking at it, that's why they also give us documentation with the packet that which this one was a little harder, but I think that it was around an acre. Yep. Looking at previously approved ones, which have already set the precedence of what we've done, um, knowing that still fell within those is why I felt comfortable approving that. Um, and knowing there was no neighbors. The opposite. Uh, dang it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just for, that's how I looked at the previous one. And this one I'm looking at, that Brian is telling us there was no exact stipulations in that PUD to clarify, knowing that moving forward, those clarifications will be there. When this was looked at previously by the Planning Commission, this is the square footage they took in consideration. So it's already been looked at once. The 2,400 or 24,000 square foot is what they thought then out of the 30,000. So I feel comfortable then moving forward based on those numbers that were used here previously. If it was something completely different, then I think we'd have to look at it differently. But just knowing two pieces, it's been looked at before, this is the square foot they counted before, and knowing that moving forward, there will be better clarification, I feel much more comfortable. Yeah, okay. go ahead, I, go I, the member I think I heard you and I think I listened and all makes a lot of sense, except I think the clarification, it's not going to be documented any more than it currently is. They're not changing the PUD to make it correct. We're doing the same grandfathering. Correct, it, but it will be in the minutes again. Okay. But this is what we considered as Perfect. the square footage for his PUD, which is what I'm assuming Brian got for the last time it was considered. Perfect, thank you. Member Rollins. Yeah, so these are kind of directed in Brian's direction. Um, is it? <laughs> safe to say that with the new computer software we have now the chances of us missing this again are limited that's the first question and the second question is will this requirement these requirements like the parking and writing and the combo be put into the computer software as a red flag to say hey these need to be filled before the permit can be issued yep. yeah it allows for much easier tracking of conditions whether it's you know one or 13 or something like that so 
you know, again, and so we get the building permit and I go back and check and I don't sign off on the building permit until I've checked all those boxes for any conditions that were part of approval. Perfect. Yes. I'll Thank you. One more general yep. comment. All of Eric's um, site plan review was wonderful. As somebody who is not an engineer, I think it was much easier to read than some of the previous ones personally. <laughs> Um, and I think that it was it was very clear to me what he looked at, which is are all questions that I think we normally ask, and it was nice to see them addressed in his um, report. So just nice to have um, an engineer. Eric, it was it was nice to read, and it in addition to staff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, with that, any other? Does anybody like to take a stab at it? It'll look nice. So we're going to finish it off. There's no dance. Gorgeous. Somebody. I did the last one. I, I can't do it as the chairman. <laughs> All right. Then. Back up to get to I'll go. I'll go ahead. And uh, for case number 23-3755, since everybody's sleeping, apparently, I'll make a recommendation uh, um, to approve the site plan for approximately 4,000 square foot addition to the clubhouse with the following conditions. The applicant complies with the township letter dated February 10 of 2023 and all necessary permits are obtained before construction begins. And number two, they will record the stormwater maintenance agreement. Three, confirmation that the parking agreement is still in place and active. Sounds like it is. And four, they will combine the lot at 1616 Galbraith Avenue with 1600 Galbraith Avenue prior to uh, getting a building permit. Support that motion. Thank you, member. Uh, motion made by member Rissy, uh, supported by member Moxley. Quick quick question before we take a vote. Do we want to put anything in there about the parking being in writing? The I mean, I, I, they said that it's in writing and you're saying the township should have it. But it was it right here. Yeah, okay. Right. All right. I, I didn't hear it. So sorry. Number three. Yep. Okay. Anybody? All right. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Hearing one. Okay. It passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. scrolling um moving right along <laughs> yeah article nine uh old business um before we get to the planning commission bylaws uh oh. i'm gonna let scott give us an update on our <laughs> meeting with the uh township board <laughs> yes we did have a uh, meeting with the township board and i guess it wasn't so much a meeting as it was a uh, presentation, I guess you could say. So uh, Chris and I stood up in front of the township board last week and told them what we've been working on on the air uh, AC zoning district subcommittee and uh, told them about the uh, the motion that we made at the planning commission level. And uh, the township board seemed to be in full support of us uh, moving forward and what we've been talking about. Uh, there didn't seem to be anybody uh, um, I've been had some questions and things, and I think there might have been some things that weren't quite understood, but that was cl clar clarified, and uh, and so we we moved forward from there. Um, now I think we're at a crossroads where uh, this kind of breaks into two different things. Now the way I I see it, we've got two issues. Uh, one is we have the need to. Um, update our master plan. And the other issue is we need to circle back around to what the AC zoning subcommittee was originally assigned for, which was to work on the on the zoning of that area and what can be done with it. So I think the subcommittee should focus on the zoning. And I think Brian should focus on the master, master plan side and work with the whole planning commission related to that. And um, so with that, I guess I'd Unless anybody has any, uh, well, let's, other... let's be clear on what they. So, what they approved for the land that was around the airport, not the AC, uh, is they want it to revert back to AG. Uh, and, and Timmy, keep us honest. Um, revert back to AG. Uh, however, they're open to uh, other uses that are open area, like parks and, and things of this nature. Any, and I was told explicitly anything that's not a business. 
Um, and they also would like to see some of the um, ag uses like a pig farm or, or nu nuisance type stuff to, to be pulled out. So um, Brian, you and I can can talk and then it will bring it back to everybody to review and, and, and iterate on. But that that's what the, the board was looking for. Do I have, am I missing anything, Timmy? Well, so here's the thing I'll say to that is a eight field sports complex is business. That it, it, that what they would be they would be open to. They, okay. Yeah. They, okay. Recreation. Same recreation. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And was was think, Visser was Visser there? Whoever oh, the, the he was there. He was there. Yeah. A lot of people did, were there. How did that? It was um, very passionate. Watch for yourself. It's on Zoom. I would encourage you to. It's watch on YouTube. For yeah. yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. It's getting hits. Okay. <laughs> so. I, oops. Yeah. So for those that weren't there, so that was a little, from a 60,000 foot view, they basically accepted the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Was that how you would say that? I, I would say that, but they they also said they're open. And I think there was uh, some desire in this group to have some open open areas. And I think that was our recommendation was yeah. with some right. stipulations. Yeah. And then, you know, bringing back some of the eggs, some, you know, processing things of that nature. So. so then should the subcommittee meet? And when to talk about what we want to do related to that? I mean, how are we come no, back? That with Brian will, will draft that. Uh, it's the okay. AC two is when the subcommittee. Is that what you're asking for? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then. Well, I, I thought we were going to work on the on the ag zoning too. No, Brian's going to no, do that. Brian, Brian, will okay. write that up. No, but Brian needs to make sure that he modifies it. I'm very passionate about this. Okay, because it the way I read it, and I could be reading it wrong, but the way I read it is they could have 29,999 turkey there or 299 cattle mm -hmm. or 599 goats. And I'd like to see those numbers come down. And, and frankly, I think they should come down for the whole agricultural district, not just that area. So that's, unless I'm misreading that, that's... Let's, let's, I would say focus on this particular one because that's what... The, well, I think this is an important spot to focus on that because the developer has already made it clear that... that so I, yeah. I, I concur. I'm just saying like, let's let's focus not on all of ag, but just these okay. particular uses. And I I think Scott can be involved too. Basically, I want to get something from Brian that this group can iterate on. Great. And we, we can start to whittle it down from there. Um, and I want the subcommittee to focus on, and again, if, if somebody opposes this, let me know, but on the zoning for that AC2. No, we just need to make sure we're all very sharp on this. All of us need to be reading the ordinances and, and paying close attention. It's pretty clear there aren't a lot of people doing that. And we, and we need to make sure that, yep. and that it, we are. And I'll, I'll leave it this way. I don't even think the township board realizes that. If, if you have a strong opinion on this, send it to Brian and he will include it in his first draft to us. The only thing I have to I guess say is if it's gonna say our just our area there zoning. I do think it would be and I don't know Brian which is harder to do to change that individual or to change what Scott had said across the whole township for certain right. limits which is harder to do or which is easier to do just because I agree. I mean, I don't, I think it should be per acre right. based on how many farm animals or something you could have. Those limits. When we're talking commercial processing right. or commercial farming type operations versus recreational type. Um, and so my question is, is it easier for you to come back with changing arc across the township versus just this one section of it. Right, it might Would you be... grandfather in any of the current farming operations? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we have his... anybody with 29. Yeah, I don't it, might, it might honestly be easier to amend the arc because otherwise you're creating a whole new overlay district just Within for that, that area. area. You right. can't so amend just that area. It's just so. that I think that, you know, just based on what Scott's comment was and just knowing, digging into this, it, I think it would be easier to change it, like Brian said, just across the whole township, if that is our intention. Um, and it might look better mm -hmm. that we are not targeting a certain area, that this is a, a, a concern across the township with some sort of commercial farming that we may not want. So to me, that's 
it's something we need to do and, and it's important and let's do it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get this land process moving. So if we are going to change the definition of ARC, let's say, hey, it's going to revert back to ARC with certain other uses. Mm -hmm. Let that go so that we can start the clock because there is a process with this. And then we can, at the same time, simultaneously work on the ARC. And whether it's this subcommittee or another, we had talked about a farmland preservation subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Would that not be better right, right, to, to no, take this on? Yeah, Member Rissi. Well, I was just going to say the other the other amendment that or change that we were talking about for that area is to add recreation. Yeah. And I don't think anybody would disagree with adding recreation to any of the agricultural zoned areas of the township if they think this one is okay to have it. Right. So, I mean, you're, you know, it, all of the changes you're talking about making are specific to, to that arc zoning, I think. Then, and that's, that's why I was throwing that out there. Yeah. And if that's the case, then let, let's just change it if, to, to arc. Yeah. I mean, does arc. anybody here want to see, uh, 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 let's say there's some arc land out off of Buttrick. Does anybody want to see a farm out there with 29,000 chickens? I, I don't think that's a good spot for 29,000 chickens any more than I think Thorn Up River Drive is a good spot for 29,000 chickens. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's 28,997. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't want to see that. But, but that's, that's my point is that I think you have to step back and say, well, maybe this is something that was written into the ordinance 100 years ago, you know, and we're not in that position anymore. That's not a good fit for what we have, you know. I would just like us to do a little due diligence to make sure that anything that we're coming up with doesn't negatively affect current farmers that are out there that are that have been doing it for hold on for two they generations and island. i just they would continue on they'd be okay so those would be grandfathered in and, yeah and, and, okay and you can That's say fine. that a higher number of swine or cattle or whatever it is you're looking at can be approved by special use i mean that's an option you can put that in there it's just it needs to have a review it's fine i just don't want the initial people in there no it, it, it yeah. only apply to new stuff it'd be it'd be a non-conforming use that can kind of approve non-conforming use remember we're not so that's half the equation and i'm sorry i'm a little slow on some of these terms still so that's the the, the ag side mm -hmm. but tightening the the, I, I don't know the ac Tightening the AC yeah. um, is a separate topic, and the board was also in approval of that suggestion as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's really written already, I think, for the most part. We just have to change it a little bit because we have to change where the overlay district is probably. So I think that that's a conversation we can have in the subcommittee, and I think we can work so through that. My question is, is it a separate subcommittee for the farmland preservation that, that goes and fixes our well, now see, but the thing, the, it, it goes against what you said about having Brian do it just so that it would be a little quicker. I, I'm fine with Brian doing it too. I'm asking the question, like, what, well, what, how do we want to take this on? Yeah. I have a suggestion. Yeah. What if, not doing this, but what if somebody made a motion to ask Brian to edit the ARC uh, zoning to limit the uh, number of animals per parcel and to allow for recreation? And then to, to work on that. And then at the same time, when you talk about farmland preservation, I haven't, I, I know I'm not prepared to talk about that yet because I haven't read through it word by word, but that's a whole, probably a whole nother issue. And that's why I'm unrelated asking. to this right now. That's why I'm asking how we want to do it. Remember, Engel, you're being awfully quiet. Do you have any thoughts on this? I think they should be separated. Um, I, I think that to your earlier point, we need to get this piece done and then work on the farmland preservation. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I don't think we run into a problem with that, do we, Brian? No, I mean, if if it's we're just looking at parks and the intensive farming uses, that's something staff could easily look at and bring a draft ordinance amendment to this group. And okay. while simultaneously getting a uh, amendment to the master plan, moving it to our guy, I, I, I've made commitments to the board to get that to them as quickly as possible uh, within uh the the required date range we have to start kicking off some of that which i believe you're aware of what what needs to happen yep. i mean we have notified yep. all of the surrounding areas and agencies um but i think there's some other things when i remember talking to the attorney that we have to do right we have to actually get that draft of what is changing yeah so that, that's not a short period of time we have to do a bunch of public hearing that's why i'm in such a rush to get it going because it's going to take a while once it does go uh, and, and candidly, that, I that's want that out of this this planning commission so that we can focus on more important. That's things. the master plan side of uh, it. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. 
the arc thing is i think we should absolutely do that in tandem i just i want that the, the land and again if anybody has a, an objection to this say it right but uh, i'm of the mind to get that land moving quickly so that we can get the process going does anybody have any concerns with that approach no Member Richardson, you seem to be, you have a questionable look. I'm just thinking about what you're saying and the way that you're saying it. Like, what is the, I mean, when you say get the process going? The land, to, to amend the master plan for future land use, we have a bunch of hurdles that we have to jump over, uh, including public hearings here, as well as at the township level. And I want to kickstart that process so that we can get this done by the end of the year. And okay. If, so if we start it now, we'll get there. And if we do this arc thing in tandem, because they don't have to happen, you know, mm -hmm. one after the other, if we do it in tandem, by the time it's set up, it'll be delivered. So while we're doing this, is there is there any cease and desist or anything that we can, I mean, is there? No, because okay. we're actively working on it. Okay. So the developer can't. Nope. Okay. All right. I talked to the lawyer about that. He has a letter that's been written already that all we have, once the application. Wait, did you want to deliver the wet letter? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's already ready. So then it sounds like from a subcommittee standpoint, since we need some direction here, the only thing we need to work on is the AC district stuff, clean that up and bring it back because the arc, it sounds like, is pretty well settled based on the conversation just now, I think. I, I believe so. Again, we can we can do a straw man poll, but I think Member Bruno had a question before we do that. Kind of just being above board of the community. So I, I love your plan, um, but just my question is, would we have to, in good faith, let everyone know who's coming to these you know meetings about we're going to re revert to ARC? That ARC is going to be defined slightly different. That would, would be part of the zoning ordinance amendment. We do public hearings for yeah. that, so that that will happen too. Aware. Okay. There'll be lots of transparency through both of these processes. They're not short or for that reason. Okay. Yeah, Member Rissy. And Brian, familiarize us again on the process for changing the zoning to amend the zoning for a district. So, or a text amendment like that is a public hearing that's noticed at the planning commission level for a recommendation to the township board. And then is there a hearing at the board level too? I don't believe there's what there isn't one required. If we okay. in the past we receive a lot of comment at the planning commission, then we do hold a second one, but it's not statutorily required. Thank you. And, and, and for the new members, I mean these notice periods um, are long, and and we have to you know, and that that again that that's why you're seeing me kind of rush it because I want mm -hmm. to get the process moving. Um, one thought that I would have if we do this is, uh, you know add at least one more to that subcommittee. Um, I'm thinking, our, and I've talked to him on the phone before coming to this meeting to make sure he would be agreeable. Our resident attorney, uh, Member Engel, perhaps joining um, just to help out with uh, some of the language around the AC2 district. I just want to say Fantastic. something too, because yeah. I'm okay with that. I don't yeah. care, but um, I think it's hard. I, I think we need to watch when we refer to you as our resident attorney Fair enough. because you are not being paid by the township I don't think to be our municipal attorney <clears throat> and I think that <clears throat> when we refer to you at that as that at this level I think that it's misleading to people to think that maybe you are counsel for the township and you are not and I just think that that's think, my error. I think we need to be careful no that's my error I, I often refer to Ralph as our resident architect mm -hmm. and and uh, Joe is our resident attorney. What do you refer to me as? <laughs> Alan. <laughs> the guy who questions parking. <laughs> our resident engineers, right? I, I you know, we're, we're, we are blessed to have a, you know, um, yeah, a resident administrator, right? You've managed huge healthcare, right? So like we, we have all of this talent here. And so I do often, you know, speak of that so that the people that are in the audience have awareness that. Right, but I just think that. But that's, no, that's, that's great feedback. So uh, I will amend it and say member Engel uh, joining it, um, given his experience uh, working with different landforms. So then if we are going to have a- I have one other thing too, just yeah. to clarify. It's not just the AC part that we're talking about then. We're actually, the board, the industrial zoning section on the- As well. South yeah. corner as well, that was not, Yes. We adopted in any way. That's, I mean, we don't, 
it's already made up. I mean, I guess we don't have to really change it. It's just bringing it back formally. Yeah. We can make any re recommendation as a committee we choose to make. So, so then uh, I guess my first question would be, did Member Engel accept the invitation to uh, serve on the committee? I'll let him answer that. He did. Okay. And so then when is this committee going to meet? That, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> and there, I would normally say we could talk about it after the meeting, but there may be people that watch this meeting that want to attend to provide feedback. So I think it's important to... to I, I will mention when I called Member Engel, um, I did say that uh, the, the subcommittee would consider meeting later if he would uh, entertain joining. So I want to make sure that I put that out there. That If so, then I won't be. I mean, 7.30 is probably the latest I can meet. And But it's not 6.30 and 6 when you are all... I would like it to be five. <laughs> Really and I'm okay with early meetings. I, I prefer early meetings. That's not an issue for me. So I I know we want to disclose it right now. I, I have some work commitments in the next right. month, the month of March, that it's very hard for me to commit. I have some things going on. Okay. Well, we can communicate after the meeting and try to pick a date and we'll have Brian post it and <laughs> move forward from there. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Chris, I think just as one point, since we had a motion to create the subcommittee, it's probably appropriate to have a motion to add Joe to the committee formally. Okay. If somebody would uh, make a motion, motion to add uh, uh, member Engel to the subcommittee. To... Motion made by member Rissi, support, support. supported by member Korsnich. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Member Engel has been added to it. And then... Um, uh, yeah, uh, Member Moxley. Uh, just one comment on future schedule of the uh, AC subcommittee. Uh, I may have to go to Dallas to help my daughter who's got a broken leg. You know, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be out of town for that. It's going to be at least a week, maybe maybe more. So good luck with you that. could join via Zoom. I think we've decided that subcommittees, people can't join via Zoom. And we Typically, we've done it in person. You can always yeah. join just to hear what's going on, but not you either. can't. Be you can listen. We, right. we have in the, in the past when we had subcommittee members that weren't able to attend, we included them via speakerphone and just so they could hear what's going on and make a comment. It's something new that you have to be present. Are we, because the subcommittee is not deliberative, are we sure they can't attend and participate via Zoom? What, 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 because what, it's not sorry. available. What's that? There isn't that room, in that conference room. It is. It just wasn't available to us oh. to use at 7.30 in the morning with no staff present. So we did our own Zoom. <laughs> Change, but they wouldn't let you vote. They were, they, we were told, I wasn't a part of it, but right. I thought at that point that it, we were told that people couldn't join, members could not join via Zoom to participate. That's what, and I don't know the backstory to because that's so, where it came from. It was so here that you, you could, you could listen, but you couldn't, and you could, you couldn't vote. But in the subcommittee, I, like Member Rissy said, we were pretty, you know, we, don't, we just used a speakerphone when Member Rappin was absent one day and it worked out fine. But, but it was never, but it's not a deliberative body. Like, can, right. can you, look into yeah. that because we have enough subcommittees i would love it if we could just have them on zoom yeah yeah or i think the, the problem yeah. comes in is that then you need somebody operating the zoom so that the general public has a link to get into if you're going to offer zoom to the i mean i don't know if you offer zoom to the participants then do you have to offer it to the public as well you would in theory have to and offer it. and i think then that that's a commitment of township resources that I don't know if. Well, let's, let's you know, see. You'd already have a Zoom ID and you'd already have a Zoom. Just yeah, but then you have to have somebody like Jessica to, to oversee if that's working, you know. And to I mean, public comment. Exactly. I mean, there's there's a lot more involved. Whereas if you just say this meeting's happening in person, here it is, it's, you know. I'd I love know. to understand it. That's all. Sure. Yeah. All right, are we all, let's just do a quick straw poll. Um, is everybody good with the plan? I'll, re, I'll repeat it. Um, three things will happen simultaneously. We will start the process of uh, reverting the master plan to ag for, or the ARC for future land use uh, for the non-airport owned land uh, that is currently designated as industrial. Uh, simultaneously, Brian and staff will- uh, Excuse me. Yeah. 
It's not currently designated. It's currently master planned as industrial, right? I thought I said designated in the master plan. No, mm -hmm. future use. It is currently for future use as industrial. It currently is zoned ag. We will change the future. Brian will change the future use to uh, back to ARC. Uh, simultaneously, Brian and team will draft uh, some revisions to ARC as a whole uh, that will reduce uh, the number of, of livestock, uh, as well as uh, include additional uses uh, for, for open space. Uh, and then third, the subcommittee will reconvene to look at the AC2 and the industrial land in the Southwest. I have and AC1. And AC1. Am I, does that, does every, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Brian, do you feel confident with your marching orders on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now the fun stuff comes. The planning commission rules and of conduct and bylaws. Oh, my screen went off. It's why so long. I was really hoping you'd be running the meeting when this was coming. <laughs> you want me to give kind of a, oh, a good, yeah. kind of brief introduction here yeah. of <clears throat> where this was at? So again, we kind of started this review a little over a year ago, um, and as a basis, right now the planning commission doesn't have a separate set of bylaws. It's included in Chapter Twenty Three of the Zoning Ordinance, which is a little unusual. Um, so they started the legal council drafted bylaws kind of based off what was in chapter 23 while amending those. Um, the plan commission pretty much finished the review of the bylaw specifically and then moved on to the rules of conduct, which are referenced in the bylaws. Um, and so we had a few questions for legal counsel, which had a little gap there, but we have gotten answers back. So in your packet, we have a draft of the bylaws. The only change is that the definition of Conflict of interest has been added, which was at the suggestion of legal counsel, as that's how it's referenced in the Planning Enabling Act. And then in section 3.2, I just added a um, sentence there to clarify if a vacancy filled is filled, if it's an unexpired term or not. And then for the rules of conduct, uh, the legal counsel provided additional definition for both conflict of interest and ex parte communication um, as requested by the Planning Commission. And so those are the changes that have been made since we reviewed this almost um, a year back from today. Member Bernal. So I feel like I'm the antagonist and I don't mean to be, but the content in here is gorgeous. Everything in it makes so much sense. But having done a startup and having worked at a large business, I feel like we're trying to do something almost, I use the word rogue, I don't know how to better describe it. If I do a Venn diagram of the chapter 23 of the zoning ordinance and the Venn diagram of the bylaws and a Venn diagram of the rules of procedure <laughs> and the rules of procedure, I think get six different names throughout here. Like you just called it rules of conduct. Mm -hmm. um, it's not clear what those are, but so there's three things. The Venn diagrams are so overlapping that it would become a maintenance nightmare if you were ever to change something because you have to be changing it multiple places. I reached out to um, a couple of um, board members and asked what is the current relationship between the planning commission and the board? And if they're all on good terms, is there any reason why we wouldn't make these changes directly in the zoning ordinance? So I guess I throw it to you guys. Why, why wouldn't we make chapter 23 more robust and capture all of this than this kind of interwoven three documents of a lot of overlap. I think I know the answer. I think you do too. When I was I mean, the chairman of the planning commission and we started discussing this, which would have been, if my calculations are right, probably two, two and a half years ago, we had a different planning director in place. And at the time, the recommendation I think was that it was easier to create this second document than to modify what was in the zoning ordinance. And so we went down that path. And Does anybody disagree with that assessment? But 
legal counsel, I think, even gave us that recommendation. I think so they did as well. This is the norm to not right. have it in the zoning ordinance, to have these documents and separate. So they're easier to take it out of the zoning completely um, because I live in a world where there's lots of changes that are reflected in multiple different documents. And one of our goals was to make it easier. So there is just one place to see the rules and to see if something changes, it is just in one document versus, and that the planning commission can make those changes. And I'd also add that at the time we were discussing that and we had, we had referred some of this to legal counsel when I was chairman, it was uh, member Merlin, I believe, who brought up several months later, where are we on that? And it turned out that legal counsel had not replied with anything. We sent them questions, we sent them a draft, and they didn't, they didn't, they didn't come back. Then nothing happened with it, which ironically is the exact same thing that happened with Chairman Nordic. So I guess again, the, the, the lone guy out here, but I, I again I heard what you said, but I see three different documents that all define conflict of interest. And if one's wrong, they're all wrong. You're changing in three places. I see three different documents that define, I think, terms. It, it's, it's again, the Venn diagram has a lot of overlap. If, if, if this is to compartmentalize and make it easier, then I think it needs to be constructed such that there's singular points. If, if conflict of interest, define it somewhere and then leave it out of the next document. Something else, define it somewhere and leave it out of the next document. It's just my take on it. And I can... I can belabor you with all of the redundancies and I can draw you the Venn if it, if it helps, but reading through here, it's, it's, it becomes very, very, very circular. And having done a startup inside of a very large corporation, this whole concept of, well, then it defers to the document above it, which then defers to the document above it, just creates snarls. But the content is great. So don't get me wrong, all of the hard work is there. I'm just question of moving it I, to a different I just, I just housing. Think, I think our goal was to make it easier. So I don't know whether whether we have final drafts in front of us completely, but I know we worked really hard. And long. It, we did. Very long. And, and I think everybody here is numb of this now. And while he's making great comments, yes, and, and, and the, the, the lack of response has nothing to do with you. Oh, no, I, I we, get that. I get we that. had the longest planning commission meetings in the history of, of the decade. No, no I, I get and, and I got that, and that's how it was hard it was for me to raise this, because I I, 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 I did glean that from previous. We lost a member over this. It was, it was, it was. The goal, though, yeah. was to make things much easier, like truly to make it so there was one place to change. And I don't know if what we're looking at was our final, final. Um, and I know the zoning piece. We can't change that until these are in place to take this out of that. So that takes out one piece of your equation. Is wait, wait, say, say that sentence again. So you t these are these are currently listed in the zoning ordinance, correct? Well, yeah. No, yes. I don't For believe chapter, any of this is chapter, chapter twenty three in the chapter administrative 20. procedures. Correct. So the goal we have to make these final before we can take them out of there. So no, no, I'm, I'm saying the exact opposite. I know you are, but I'm okay. saying we looked at it a million different ways when we looked at it originally and legal counsel agreed that it's not normal for it to be in the zoning ordinance, that it is normal for them to be separate documents. And so we worked hard on pulling them out of there, making these separate documents based on what legal counsel's recommendation was, what the standard is in other municipalities is. That's why we changed it. And so right now, some of the overlap that you are talking about will be removed if the board agrees, because the zoning changes have to come from the board, if these finally get adopted. Okay, so I will stand corrected if, if I can repeat back to what you said. Mm -hmm. I did not walk away with what you said was actually going to happen, because this document makes circular references back to Chapter 23. So right. I don't think it's being pulled out of Chapter 23. Yeah, if it was being pulled out, I would agree. The if idea it, behind this document was so that we didn't have to make an amendment to Chapter 23. Correct. The idea was that this document would not be in conflict with Chapter 23, yeah, but, that, but that it would stand by itself. And if we needed to make an amendment to it, 
we could simply as a planning commission, and it wouldn't involve the township board at the level that it would if we changed chapter 23. So that is my is, understanding. So your goal is to have two identical documents that aren't redundant. But that, that was essentially, I think, what the original... That's not what our goal was. I think that's originally what legal counsel was asking us it to sounds do. sounds like it. Yeah. That's what Scott's saying, his interpretation of it. And that's how this reads. But that was not our original plan. And that was not what legal counsel, and even when you read through the notes in here from Brian, she said, we can pull these out in a separate document, that it is not normal for them to be listed in the zoning ordinance. So right, but initially they didn't want us to edit the zoning ordinance. That was the whole reason for creating this document. So we didn't have to go to the board and, and modify the zone. Otherwise, we would have just modified the zoning right. ordinance. The legal it, legal counsel said they wrote it so it's not in conflict with the zoning ordinance. Right. So technically you don't have to amend it, but you could amend it to remove the redundancies because you don't need the zoning ordinance. The, yes. You would just use the bylaws. It's interesting though, because like so, two and a half, three years ago, they didn't want to amend the ordinance. So, so, so let me try to find, because I, I, again, I feel, I feel, I feel like I'm going to get eggs thrown at me. I don't want eggs thrown at me, but I'm, I'm just, I'm, let me try to do a different way to say this. It sounded like that was then, this is now, some encumbrances then have changed. There's a reference to a previous role that someone's not here anymore with maybe better relationships, better skilled personnel, better legal representation, better board members. Could we take another high level look at how best to implement the content? Somebody create a lot of content. So I'm looking at this and I say 95% of it is good. So I don't think it's a major reset. It's not like we're starting from scratch. It's just, where is it housed? Could we revisit where and how is it housed to be most effective for us in decades to come as opposed to the snarl? So legal counsel's recommendation on that was that it be housed in a separate yeah. bylaw. So member Bernal, are you uh, signing up to, are you volunteering so. to, to run a, a, a one-man subcommittee to, with, or maybe a two-man with member Rowland? I would, member Rowland, I think. I would volunteer a, to work with someone on the township board, like this gentleman over here, Timmy, who I think would be very open to creating a streamlined document, one-stop shopping for the township. And be willing to swim upstream. I second that. <laughs> time. <laughs> okay. I guess if, that's if that was that's your goal. Document can we is. at least read it? I don't understand. So, so as an outsider, correct. if you read this, do you agree that if that was the goal, this this doesn't hit the mark? I only looked at the changes to be honest okay. with you because I was because you were part sick of, of it. Okay. <laughs> no, I was a part of the original, and I thought that was what our plan was. Well, I think at one time we I, even had a subcommittee review. Member it. Engel. Member Engel. If, if I hear what you're saying, Wendy, is your thought was that by doing this, I think, very nice job on the bylaws last year that you guys spent all that time on, we basically take Chapter 23 and reduce its size. We don't need it anymore, and we give ourselves the flexibility as a commission to make changes to this document going the bylaws forward. Bylaws and the rules of conduct. Correct. Yes. You just take it right out of the ordinance That's completely, which we're authorized to do by law. Yep. That was my understanding. Is that right, Brian? Correct, yeah. So this little neat print of Chapter 23, Administrative Procedures, doesn't become, is no longer, would no longer be relevant to our consideration of either the bylaws or the rules of procedure. Correct. Period. Yeah, there's no reason any of this needs to be included in the zoning ordinance. That was my understanding. Okay. And even when Mr. Merlin was on this committee, I thought that was... <laughs> One of our primary things was the contradict having it in too many places. Changes get made; they're not made in two. We talked to legal counsel. My understanding was we could pull it out of the zoning and make these two separate documents that were very clean, that would come to us once a year for review, just so that we everybody would know we're all on the same page, and that's what we would be using. Well, I would just like to see us get this done as orderly and quickly as we can because i have a feeling this is getting to be very expensive judiciously right i mean this has been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed the subcommittee to do that do we think there needs if, to be changes so i just want to this? repeat back before i before because i volunteered now it's morphed a little bit but I, but i i think i actually like the way it's morphed better <laughs> i heard that this was all started so we wouldn't be amending i propose that we amend there was pushback that no, this stops from ending. 
stops the need for amendment. And then we came full circle to, no, this requires amendment. The amendment is, is to redact all this content from the current zoning ordinance and to make these truly standalone non-snarl documents. That's that's what, that, I think it's a great way to go. So I'm very supportive of that. Who would I like, think, uh, Chris, are you, are Chris you, honestly, I think staff could do that. I think this was written so that we can pull it out of chapter 20. No, I think this needs a subcommittee. My, my, my <laughs> only point for clarification, again, my, my, my naivete, I read this all from when I looked at chapter 23 from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. I understood chapter 23 governed two different commissions. It, it does. does. It governs the zoning board, so it we wouldn't take that out. Well. So we would. So we wouldn't out. really getting more. I don't know how deep I want to drill down this, but so we wouldn't be repealing really all of Chapter Twenty Three. We'd be re striking all references to the planning commission's procedures within Chapter Twenty Three. Chapter Twenty Three would still have its well, own entities regarding zoning appeals. I, I would be careful on how you word that because I think it would still reference the planning commission. For some items that aren't in okay, sure. in this document, but any any redundancy. circular or redundancy, yeah, it, that's where you would, and that's why you have to go over them with a fine tooth comb. Mm -hmm. We did this. Yes, we did. We that's did right. this, and I swear we did it in a subcommittee. No, I I, I want to say no. We that's what the four hour meetings were, midnight. were for. Ah, oh, but I remember doing it at Township Hall. We're gonna Ralph get... was there. Craig was there. You were there. Ben was there. That might have been it was, and we went we went one. there was never a bylaws <laughs> subcommittee maybe i'm thinking of something that was on the other subcommittee that really followed the same content I feel like you can get this done and you can consult member bruno as you go yep. through it sure all right anybody have a problem with that no so then we'll, i just want to clarify though then we will get the final section 22 23 23 23 section 23 to review and the final bylaws and code of conduct. Yeah. These these are the most up-to-date bylaws. And, and again, we can adopt these at any time. And then we you can make amendments to chapter 23 later, or we can do them okay. simultaneously. And then the way. only other thing, just whoever looks at this, because I know this was a big problem before, just calling them the same name throughout everything. Yeah, the, that was from the attorneys where they had rules of procedure. There's no reason we can't change that to okay. rules of conduct. Well, if, if because to that vein, when you get to the last section of the bylaws, whoever was writing this got themselves confused because <laughs> Article 11 basically says the rules and procedures adopted by the Planning Commission, they, the last section is basically that they can change the bylaws, and they're talking about changing the rules and procedures. So that, that first sentence in Article 11 yeah, it needs to be cleaned up. doesn't make any sense. Member Bernal, you and Brian have a lot to talk about, and <laughs> we don't want to get in the way of that, so... Uh, <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna please include the trustee. Yeah. So do you need a formal? Do we need to have a? Do we need to have a, to need to have a formal vote to uh, to create the subcommittee? There's no subcommittee. No. There's no subcommittee, and if it takes you till January of 24 to get it done, I mean, who am I? Yes, or 25. I think we have all looked at the the new the bylaws, and we've all looked at the rules of procedure slash conduct. Would it be helpful if there are any? glaring changes that we've seen here today that we think need to be made other than the titling of things and maybe the references to chapter 23 which have to come out anything else that people found that we might be able to help you with i have a few is it better to go through them now and take people's time or to create a list of errata and present it later or like i don't know yes that. <laughs> no, I, I, it's easier to look at something that you know that, that you're bringing yeah like the, bring it back to us and we can we can iterate if we need to if not see it beforehand and read through and like yeah. digest it versus trying Excellent. to scroll. i can i can do that so I would say, yeah if, if anyone has comments on what's in here feel free to email them to me and we'll do it on the revised copy then yeah great awesome article 10 uh any other business yes uh, there was discussion at our last meeting about changing the title of the Round Hill subcommittee re recommendations. Uh, has, have we heard anything from our attorney about uh, that? I did not. I got distracted for a few weeks and did not send that request on. So what, was the, name, what was the name of that developer? Goosty. Goosty. That, well, that was the owner. I don't think the actual no, the company Goosty, name. Could but... we call it the Goosty subcommittee? Can you ask the attorney if we can? Yeah. I might be mispronouncing. Problem source. Juicy scout. Yeah. 
think he that more reflects. That's what I'm saying. That's my whole was my. Whole no, no. I think I think I I really it was thoughtful, but like no, that's but let's use the name. developer's name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's use that's, his name. Yeah, he was the project manager on site for the developer. He was a guy who was right there yeah. lying to us many times. So <laughs> as the non-resident attorney here, I would I don't really see a problem with renaming it. I don't see it. If not legally, if you're concerned about the non-resident. Yeah. Gotta be careful because non-residents are exactly. exactly. preserved on the planning. Member. So the ex officio member? We already have an ex officio member. He sits down there. Okay. So Do we have any visitors that are on Zoom? Anybody that wishes to speak? Oh, I have a question for you, for yes. everybody. Under Article 10, any other business, is this the time where we would just like bring up random ideas, comments, concerns? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Another meeting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. no, you bring up anything random you want. <laughs> bring it on. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's a few things I've noticed. I mean, I love Cascade. There's a few things maybe following broken windows theory where I can see a couple of things that we could tweak to make it a little bit nicer, mostly cosmetic things. Yeah. Um, I feel as though we're developing somewhat of a graffiti problem near the highway that did not used to exist, does now. Um, I also think um, the hotel, or I guess it's a motel <laughs> next to the McDonald's situation has not been resolved. Um, I wonder about Hotel Avenue. Is that legally an actual street or is that just a parking lot with a street sign? Who fixes that? I know the answer is nobody, but Where's could it be? <laughs> it runs in between oh, like I, Aldi I, and Costco I, down Target to Target. Back. Yeah, and no, if you that's go beyond Target. I believe it's you a need, road. Like, an off road vehicle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, that, let's go to that one. Uh, Brian, can you check with the road commission on that? That is a road. So, yeah, that's been because there's a hotel back there too. Yeah, it has been repaired. It has been repaired. It's a much well, better part. Yes, that's true. Behind Target up to 33rd has been repaved and it's nicer, but alongside Target is not good still. Or again, actually, I, I just drove that today. So it was horrendous right past Target. There's a little bridge you go over. They can pave that about halfway to what is it, 32nd? Yeah. 33rd. Yeah. 33rd. It's beautiful. But the latter half they didn't is it's not it. We can disasters when you're talking about. So even <laughs> ignoring maybe the tar target parking lot, the latter half of that road is we can check with Brian can check with the road commission on that. Okay. Road. And then again, I'm focusing kind of on the same area over and over, but there still are homeless people living next to the Aldi in between. I guess you'd say, I'm sorry, I'm not pulling it up properly here. Whatever little plaster creek there and the highway on and off ramp, um, I know that we've somehow maybe addressed that in some way, but the panhandling out there is still going on when you try to leave Costco. Um, maybe, yeah. And they seem to always disappear back over into this area you know, you know where they're living is um so 96 and 28th street the northwest corner there's a group of pine trees right up close to the highway kind of and if you look real close like when i'm driving i don't see it but when my husband's driving i can look there's blue tarps underneath of the pine trees yeah it's they evicted the guy that was living there there's new ones i think they evicted the ones that were here. under the highway and the ones well, that were over by. Um, okay, because back when that was going on, that tar that's when that tarp was placed. That tarp was placed in the fall, because I brought it to township staff's uh, attention, and they, I believe, M dot M dot right. They took the person away, but nobody ever cleaned up the mess. Usually, the townships when they evicted the them, they township cleaned up the mess. Out. Yeah, <laughs> the township cleaned up the mess on the south side of the road, but they did not clean up the mess on the north side. And you're sure he's not living? Well, if somebody could have moved back in since, but that tarp was there in the fall. I think what you're saying when they leave, I think that panhandling area, I think that's one of the places they're going. I just, I continue to see people that seem to be panhandling and or living there. And I, I think we were told by manager, by Ben, <laughs> that if we contact him and let him know that the road commission has 
noticed them enough that now it's easier for them to evict people in the future because they've been through the process. Is that correct? My understanding was that MDOT gave us permission to call it trespassing on their property so they can be removed by police. Right. Because they've done the the counseling that they that is required, MDOT requires yeah. counseling to be done before they evict people off their property, which is the, probably the right thing to do. Um, I, that was my understanding too, that we can just contact Ben if you see somebody or see mm -hmm. a new or me there, right? Yeah. I had been watching in the snow and I haven't seen any tracks to that tent all winter long, but it is still there. It's just, I don't think people notice it. Oh, I can get it cleaned up. Yes, please. Oh, we'll um, it's on the north and side. then a couple more items that I've noticed. <laughs> it's right so again, here. the graffiti <laughs> issue is <laughs> like a mold trees. that's growing. Like um, we're not the taking care of right in here. the areas where there are graffiti. <laughs> so now there are but maybe in Bolden's Costco. the same people to just create more. That in the highway, like the overpass, is that where you're seeing? Yeah, the um, every overpass in Cascade now has some graffiti there. Um, and it just seems to be growing. I also- Hang on before you go. Oh, I was just going to tell you, Rob, that so we are aware of the graffiti and I've been keeping a list of where it is and Ben has been talking with me. It's just- I believe it was too cold to paint last okay. time they went out. So was... <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I want you to get an answer. Um, and then I also wonder about the, I don't want to call it a downed power line, but a very low hanging, at least communications line um, on 48th Street across from Thornapple Point, right mm -hmm. near Prairie River Drive. It's been... I mean, I'm driving past it, so I, my point of reference may not be accurate. I mean, it may very well be way up in there, but it appears to droop down to like maybe five feet off the ground there in the middle. And it's been that way for very long time. at least since November. Um, it looks bad and maybe potentially dangerous if it's, I mean, something that someone walking by could grab onto. They'd only do it once. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, to me, a, at least a concern, but it also just looks bad. I also wonder if you has if you've been to Cascade Township Park there, the recreation park, people call it, at the corner of Thornapple. Well, I guess Thornapple and 36, where 36 meets Thornapple. It could drive. Sure. Yeah. Um, we could theoretically put some sort of um, sound barrier wall along the highway there, or at least pine trees or something that could make it quieter. I was just there the other day with my kids and we were, you know, three feet from each other and you have to be like, what, what, what? It's not super peaceful with the amount of noise. And then... That's, I think, being addressed at the Parks Committee, right? And we've gotten a grant. We've gotten a grant. We're going to be awesome. in there. That's great. Along there, yeah. uh, this coming year. Yeah. Awesome. And then the final thing that I wanted to mention is, I know that everyone's supposed to drive the speed limit. Um, Everyone else. But if anyone's ever tried to drive the speed limit or even just five miles per hour over the speed limit along Buttrick, the whole way from like, let's say Grand River Drive down to Cascade, I mean, you'll almost end up airborne. Like it's very, it's the worst street in Cascade it's as far bad. as how much of a wooden roller coaster it feels like. Never at any point are all four of your tires on the same plane. Um, it's very bumpy. It's not as wide as it ought to be either. And um, it's just, it's not even the bumpiness so much as the fact that you're always tipping back and forth like at any given moment. Um, I mean, I don't know like what the plan might be or how far in the future it might be to address that road, but when it does become addressed, it really needs to be regraded or something. I mean, it needs to be fixed. The subgrade on the hill going up the from Ada river. Park to the to the top there by the by the um, 
Bet's place is horrible. Even when the road was re redone and it was the asphalt was beautiful, it is. You're absolutely right. It's 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 a hazard. You're not paying attention. Paul Vance on your wheel, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, and there's no shoulder on that road either. I mean, you, you make that. a mistake, you're yeah. There's somebody's little ditch. room for error yeah. with how narrow the that road, road, road commission. That's a road commission. Issue. Remember, Rissy. That's a road commission issue, and because they manage the roads, right? But I think the biggest problem we have as a township is that we don't have any residents attend road commission meetings really and speak to those points. Mm -hmm. I know I think if we had a hundred citizens show up at a road commission meeting month after month and after month and complain about a particular road that's in deteriorating shape, I think it might get moved up on the mm -hmm. on the priority list. But I don't think we I don't think we're very vocal. I could be wrong on that. I'm just it's just an assumption. Because I don't see very many people come here and be vocal about things either. But the other the other item I wanted to mention is in response to your graffiti. Um, I certainly agree with you that graffiti is a problem. I actually uh, brought that up here a number of years ago because there was a different person sitting over there. And uh, I had a situation that I was familiar with. I had an individual that caught a person painting bridges in the township. They had their whole kit, custom nozzles, different, all the hands arranged certain ways, templates. I mean, we had it all. Name, license plate number, everything. And they called the Kent County Sheriff's Department. They knew where the person was. And they made the good Samaritan who had everything wait on the side of the road for an hour and a half. And finally, that person called back and said, I, I'm going to go home. This is ridiculous. And they told them, oh, I'm sorry. We decided not to come to that call 45 minutes ago. We just continued to let you wait, even though you just called us again 30 minutes ago. And we told you we were on our way. And the sheriff's department did not handle the situation, never, never investigated it, never took the information uh, seriously, and nothing happened. And since then, and this was a number of years ago, since then, the graffiti has expanded exp exponentially. But until the King County Sheriff's Department will follow up on leads that come in at like two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon when it's bright and sunny and there's not much going on, uh, we're just, we're not going to get ahead of it. I mean, we can paint all the bridges we want, but they're painting them just as fast. If you look at all the overpasses on M6, including the ones that you can't see unless you're riding on a freight train, they are completely covered with graffiti. And, and that's, you know, that's going to continue to happen until we get ahead of it. But that's where the problem, we, we have nobody really doing any enforcement on graffiti as, as far as I can see. I still, I don't disagree with anything that you said, um, but I still think an effort could, should be made to, I mean, even if you have to paint over it right before they paint it again. I, oh, I no, I, I agree with you. It needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. And I think a board member on here. Thank you, Michelle. I think when the, the the sheriff comes to the board to discuss mm -hmm. the report and their different things and what we want as a township with the money we're paying them, if this is something important, then maybe it should be something that is brought up from the board to our sheriff liaison as something we do want addressed. Although as a country boy, it's not too cold for them. <laughs> Have we heard anything about the hotel and that anything has that been cleaned up at all or they're still getting 90 calls a, a month? We're waiting on charging them for that. We're waiting on the managers, I understand it, to act, correct? The manager <clears throat> says it's at the attorney's office. But I, don't, I don't know how many measures are going to the attorney's office, but we're looking at 40000 a month. What? That we're paying. We're losing, losing rather. Not well, maybe we should push the attorney a little harder. I mean, I don't know how much the attorney gets charged. You want, I, I, I suggest you, you take it? that up with the manager. Okay. Can you explain that for the newbies? What? How are we losing twenty thousand a month? Because there's an ordinance that we're having the attorneys draft, where if you have over and go ahead, Timmy. Over you know, two calls a month for the services, we want to put a fee on there for the next call. The hotel, there's three hotels, three addresses on 28th Street. They're taking 240, 250 calls a quarter down there. We want to 
charging for those extra calls, but I don't have the ordinance in place. But several communities do have that ordinance in place. Who's the manager? Ben Swayze. Ben okay, Swayze. Ben. All right. That's yeah, duh. I knew that. All right. Uh, member Rissy. Uh, just a thought. I know a long time ago when one of the owners of several hotels in the community was in front of us to get permission to, I think, build another hotel. One of the things that was brought up was that if you keep your room rates high, it helps keep out the riffraff. Seems logical. Is there a, is it possible that the township can, can apply a room tax to a certain uh, rate, say, you know, a certain dollar amount up to that the room is taxed and it's a significant tax and then anything over that amount, there's no tax because that might influence people to keep the room rates higher. I think we need to wait and see how this plays out. To I, I do too. I was just throwing that out as a possible I, I, I think it's, it's all great, but it, it doesn't fit within the confines of the commission. So, you know. No, you're right. And uh, I'm just throwing ideas down know, to I Timmy. Love that. So. I, I, I love that idea. I suggested one similar to Timmy. I just don't know what we can and can't do, but it does sit here. Yeah. Yeah. We're on it. Yeah. Uh, Member Moxley. Uh, my wife and I try to walk over a Peace Park uh, every other day. <clears throat> and uh, speaking about eyesores, there is a uh, farm operation at the corner of Bolt and Grand River that is a dump and it needs to be cleaned up. And I don't know if there's some way we can uh, enforce that. Obviously, we can't just kick them out. But I mean, there's an old uh, flywheel steam engine there. There's buildings that are falling apart. There's all kinds of junk and it just looks- It looks like a junkyard. It does. Yeah, it's looked like that since before it became Peace Park. I, oh, yeah. I drove out there with Tom McDonald when that was being contemplated, and I'd never been to that corner. I thought, wow, what is that? Been that way since the business closed. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure it's related to the farming operation on the other side of the road down by the river. The you can see all the houses. Oh, Vos, Vosburg's uh, sand and block. They used to sell cinder blocks there years ago, I think, and sand and gravel. There's a gravel put back to Ruth Riley, at least for I mean, many years. That was years. like 20, 30 years ago now. Oh, well, it was a lot more than that. Yeah. It was, yeah, I mean, if you read the old uh, suburban life newspapers, I think there's there's uh, ads in there for getting sand and block over at Osbergs. Yeah. Ralph, I'll look into that property. Appreciate it. Um, Member Richardson, did you get your list extinguished? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Good. <laughs> no, no. Uh, thank you for bringing this. It's yeah. Fresh perspective. It's good. Thank you for agreeing to serve on a one-man subcommittee, even though it wasn't necessary. Whoa, we need, we need one man. I'm pretty sure Trustee was supposed yeah, to be on that's there. That's fair. Timmy. <laughs> if we could get Timmy on more subcommittees, I think we by could. Himself. Yeah. yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. Gotta have a seasoned. All right. Does anybody else have any other business? All right. Do we have any visitors that are wishing to speak? All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? I move, I move we adjourn. Member Engel makes the motion supported by Sorry. Member Moxley. Yeah. All those favors say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Have a good night, all. <laughs> oh, Brian, we're on in two weeks. Uh, anything on there yet? Um